Hey guys, uh, welcome to the channel. This is uh, your host, uh, Chris Corey, with Shadows Techland. So I wanted to go over a couple things uh, of what I've been working on. Uh, as of right now, you're probably already um, set up a home lab. You have some services, a bunch of web pages for internal services, um, you know, plaques, downloading, whatever the case may be. Uh, there's quite a bit to have to keep in mind, and it's kind of annoying to have to go through and have you know 20 tabs open especially in desk setups where you can only have maybe a small amount of space for maybe one monitor. Makes it kind of obnoxious when you have 20 billion tabs open. Probably looking for some sort of landing page. Granted, there's a lot of different versions of software out there that probably do the same thing. Uh, one of the ones that I've been using for quite a while is called Organizer. Uh, pretty awesome. It's on GitHub. There's quite a few different ways to basically um, install it and get it going. So I thought I would go over that uh, with you, let you know what the options are. Um, it is on GitHub, which I will leave a link in the description of how you can get that installed. Uh, there's a few different ways that you can go ahead and um, basically get this installed. Uh, there is a uh, in install script that can be used, which I have used in a Linux VM before. Um, it can be slightly um, a pain in the butt to use. Uh, one of the options that has made quite a bit more um, substantial ease of use for install is you can go ahead and either a couple options, you can use the installer script through like a Linux distro or something of that nature. It'll automate everything, go ahead and install it and get it running for you. Otherwise, you can go ahead and create a uh, Docker and Dockerize it and put it in a container and set it up that way. But an even easier option that you can definitely go ahead and use is there is pre-made templates that are made in the uh, community slash um, application stores. For like an example, uh, FreeNAS, you can install it as a plugin, I do believe. I haven't used FreeNAS for a while, but I believe it is an, an option in there. Uh, I know for a fact that it does work in the Unraid community application store. That is the version and the method that I use because it's really super easy. You just go ahead and go to the community app store, search organizer, and it installs and pre-compiles and configures everything for you. It takes like two, three minutes to install. It's super easy, super duper, really relatively quick. So one of the things you will need to keep in mind is if you are using it through Docker or um, community application store, using like FreeNAS, um, Unraid, uh, Open Media Vault. Um, Synology QNAP, I believe, they have their own application store as well to some extent. I believe it should be an option in there. That will be something you'll have to double check yourself. I don't know for sure because obviously I don't have one. Uh, one of the things that you'll need to keep in mind is the IP address needs to match your IP scheme for your network. Also, you will need to uh, have the correct port to open for it to be able to be used. Uh, remotely, you don't have to open the port on the firewall but you will have to have a port open that you can use. Depending on how many services you have, you'll need to figure out what works best for you. Um, one, I already went ahead and I had to reinstall mine because uh, my I actually forgot my password, funny enough. So I went ahead and reinstalled it again and did some basic setups and then I'll go over it with you. So I already installed the uh, organizer from the community application store uh, went ahead and opened it. Uh, once you open it, it's going to ask you a few configuration basic uh, first time setup questions. So the username you want to use, the email address you want to use for registration, and then also it will ask you a database name, and then it will ask you a um, database uh, path, so where it is that you want it installed to. If you have like your database set up on like another container or server or something on an issue, you'll need to basically make sure that it works and it's pointed correctly. Uh, I went ahead and my database is super simple. It's just set up in the container itself, nothing crazy. So I use the defaults and then it does give you a couple um, database paths as a examples of where you can install the database too. I just used one of those, picked it and installed it. Uh, once you do that, it will basically take you to the home page. Uh, my home page is obviously um, a little bit more set up. 
I have Tarantula, I probably pronounced that incorrectly. It has some basic stats. And then of course I've set up a few of my tabs. I will go over that uh, briefly with you. Then we can kind of take a look at it and see what it's basically all about. So this is basically the uh, on-screen that will come up as soon as you log in and after your first time configuration you'll be brought to here. Uh, as you can see I already have a few of my basic services set up. I still need to set up more obviously and I will um, go over it. basically how to do some tabs with you. So you'll have your main page. Um, this is where you can set up. The uh, organizer will have its own API key and that's basically the API key that is used to communicate with other services. And then, of course, the organizer database itself. Um, there's some security tabs that you can set up if you really want to lock things down or if you have some other configurations that you want to add in there. There's also proxies that you can set up for, um, like, reverse proxy, things of that nature. Uh, you'll have a couple single sign-ons that you can set up. So you'll have Plex in here. Uh, what you'll need to do is you'll need to uh, hit retrieve and then after that it will ask you for your Plex uh, account credentials which is what you'll use in order to grab the Plex token and then the Plex machine which is basically whatever server a uh, machine, Synology, whatever the case may be that the Plex media server itself is actually installed on. And then my IP address for Tuantula, and then of course if you had Omvi set up for uh, media requests, then you can put that in there as well. So I've already went ahead and set up a lot of the basic services I use. I have Plex in here, uh, Tuantula, which is basically the fork of PlexFi that came out, uh, Sonar, Radar. I do have two Unraid servers, uh, my primary and then my backup. And then, of course, my Unraid file browser, so that way I can get in and move downloads and things of that nature around if I do need to. And then uh, Pigwa, I probably pronounced that incorrectly as well. Uh, that is a photo management software, which I will probably be going over in an, a, another video if you are curious, so keep an eye out for that. I do have a Grafana set up so I can go ahead and monitor my main Unraid server, which there already is another video about that, so go ahead and... Look at my other videos and you can see the link for that. And then of course I do have two Pi Holes, my primary, and then my backup, which I already have a couple videos for Pi Hole already out as well. And then of course my wiki, which there will be another video of that coming out as well. And then you have your tabs over here. Now there are a couple things that I have noticed, and just kind of a FYI heads up, uh, depending on the service, that you are um, IPing, that way you can go ahead and take a look at whether it's Plex, uh, whatever service it is, download service, etc. Some of them do not work with iframes, which is an internal frame that is used in order to stay within um, organizer's internal window. Sometimes those services don't work and you will have to open up another browser tab which will automatically do it for you. I'll show you examples of that. Uh, for example, uh, Plex has to open up in another window for some reason. That does not work correctly in an internal iframe. I believe it's how it's handled and interpreted in Java and all that fun stuff. Uh, Sonar, I was able to get to work, so as you can see, I'm still within the organizer website itself, so it doesn't have to open up another browser tab. Uh, Radar was able to work, and so was my main Unraid server. So was my photo management software. Um, Unraid for monitoring, that was not able to, as you can see as an example, uh, that has to open up in another tab. I do have, a, oh, like I said, another video of this in the, my list that you can go ahead and take a look at. Uh, Pi-hole was another one, which I do have on two physical Raspberry Pi devices. Uh, that was another one that basically did not work inside of an internal window. I had to have it force open another tab, which is kind of annoying, but there's not really much I can do about it. It's just the way that it handles it. 
Uh, I do have a couple more services that I need to um, set up, so I'll basically I'll show you a couple of them. So you just go down to settings. So you go settings, and then tab editor, and then right here, another one. So tab name. Uh, the tab URL, and then the tab local URL, so if it's pointing to like another machine, something of that nature. And then of course the tab that it will use, excuse me, the address it will use to ping it. And then of course there are quite a few uh, are already in icon images that are used um, from organizer that they put together, so if yours is in there you can go ahead and click it, just like this one is right here. Otherwise, you can do custom, and then you can come back, and then you can actually add an image in there to show what it is that you're trying to make an example of. And then you can test it. Which it looks like it's wanting a new window for this one as well. So, I reload. Come back to here, you'll see this down here. It didn't work. Um, so one of the things that you can try is go back to tab editor. Instead of an iframe, you can try internal. Sometimes that will work, sometimes it won't. You just have to try and basically it depends on whatever service that you're trying to get access to. As you can see, nothing showed up. So unfortunately, it looks like this one will have to be open on another tab. So, opens up a new window. Reload it. And there you go. See if there is anything else that I need to add. Another one that I would like to add as well. So Filebot, which is another video that I have already done. You can look that up in my video list if you wanted to know more about it. And there's no image for it at this point. So, good example, I can show you how to add a custom image. So you basically at that point you would just go to Google, you can go to Google Images or go ahead and take a snippet, whatever the case may be. Then you would come over here to Image Manager and then at that point Let me go ahead and grab that. And now you will see, now this is a list of, it, of icon images that have basically already been compiled by Organizer. There's quite a few in there. Now you can see right here, my new image is in there. So I can go back over to Tab Editor. I can edit.
And I just basically just copy pasted the file address. So if you go back over to here, click on that icon, you'll see the plugins images. That's basically the label of the image. And now it will show correctly as Filebot. Then you reload your page. And then you will see Filebot here. So that's a good way to do custom images for icons that don't show up in the icon store. Well, uh, database, I guess is a better word that you could call it for uh, organizer. And basically just rinse and repeat for all of the services that you have. That way you can get that uh, taken care of and have everything quick added. And that's basically a uh, brief overview of organizer. It's basically a nice organized landing page that way you can get all your services in one area and not have to have uh, to remember all of your IP addresses, ports, etc. Uh, if you have any other further questions, definitely feel free to uh, hit me up on my social media and like, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.